All right, what's going on? So this is my first foray into relicking hardware for this Strat. I've done some of this before on a Les Paul that I have, and there's some older videos out there if you want to go look at that. And what I did in the past is really just scuffed up, and I used an, not an orbital sander, but one of those Black & Decker handheld mouse sanders, which just has a really fast back and forth rotation, and I guess sort of a random pattern. So what I did, I thought I'd just kind of like see how inexpensive I could go while maintaining a job well done on this. So what I have here is some vinegar, white distilled vinegar, and some scouring pads, $1.79 for each. So like what, 360 for the whole thing. And I'm just gonna mess around. There's a lot of ways to do this. There's muriatic acid, which is hydrochloric acid, I, I believe. There is etching solution. There is, you know, immersing the stuff in the solution. There's putting it in Tupperware and letting the vapors do the work. There's scuffing it up. There's putting it in a bag of bolts and nuts and shaking it around and putting dings and dents in it. There's all sorts of ways. And I'm gonna just try to scuff it up and put some vinegar directly on it, see what happens. And hopefully it doesn't destroy it or make it look really bad but I think the vinegar is not so acidic that it's really gonna just eat the paint off or, or the uh, the finish off and hopefully this won't be too too scratchy if it is if I notice it is I'm just gonna go to some finer sandpaper which I actually have but I just thought I'd try to find some like easy to find remedy kind of solutions that you'd find in a grocery store or something like that so here we go all right let's see what happens I'm just gonna go over this lightly at the moment without Really trying to dig into it. Uh, scratching it up a little bit. So as of right now, and I'm sorry for the really bright light, I just want you to be able to see it and I may be blinding you instead. Uh, right now it's a little too scratchy for me. There's too many really distinct lines in it. So I don't know. I'm gonna just try to put the vinegar on it and see what happens. Now I also have this stuff that I used for the body of the guitar. This is the vinegar. It's actually white distilled vinegar and apple cider vinegar together along with the steel wool that's dissolved. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's really dissolved. I mean, there's actually still particles in there, but um, it's not anywhere in the form that it was originally in when I put it in the little container. So I have this and I don't know if it's any more corrosive now that it's got that steel wool in there dissolved already, but this is an option. But again, I just wanted to use stuff that's readily available to anyone. If I do end up using this, I'll try to document it. So here's the vinegar. Just gonna dab some of this on here. I'll probably have to let this sit for a while, I assume. So. We'll see, maybe I'll leave it on a few hours and come back and see what happens. And my last little snippet there, I was doing some trial and error with uh, scouring pads and vinegar that I bought just at the local grocery store. So what I found is the scouring pads, these are just kind of like off brand. And so, you know, if you buy the 3M ones, you can kind of more or less guarantee what you're getting. They're, they're colored differently. There's like the, I think the red one is probably the best, the finest. And then there's green and blue and all sorts of things. But again, this is just some off brand thing. But what I found with that is that when you start scratching up a chrome piece like this bridge plate, it really just put some deep scratches in there that I didn't really like. It just looked like I was trying too hard. And so what I'm gonna do with this one is take some finer paper, actually some like wet sanding paper, probably a thousand grit, and just see if it really does anything at all. That's really a, one piece of advice that I would give is that you can really get, go a long way with just scratching up this stuff. You don't necessarily have to use any kind of acid or etching solution. One other tip that I realize is the uh, muriatic acid is essentially hydrochloric acid. Now, I'm not a chemist or a chemical engineer, although I work with a lot, but if you buy like even like toilet bowl cleaner, like the works is a brand, it's basically hydrochloric acid. So I would not put this, this hardware directly into something like that, but if you want to do the whole vapor thing, where you like put the stuff in a piece of a little Tupperware and then you put that in a bigger piece of Tupperware that has the solution at the bottom and you just 
cover all up and you let the fumes do the work, then you could do something like that and it's probably inexpensive. I went to like Home Depot and looked for some muriatic acid and it was the only stuff I could find was like $13, which if you know me, I'm a tightwad and that was too much for me. And I may end up, you know, just getting some because I need it, but that is to say you could also buy just regular old toilet bowl cleaner. So on the flip side of that, uh, the etching solution, that used to be available pretty readily at like Radio Shack, but Radio Shacks are going out of business all over the country, and I don't think that you can probably find any. You'll have to get that online, I'm guessing, like an Amazon or, or whatnot. I think I saw some on Amazon that was just a little bitty bottle, and it was still, I don't know, 4 or $5 plus shipping. So you're looking at around $10. You know, I don't know. It's up to you if you want to do that. I'm just trying to give you the things I've kind of learned up to this point, and I'm kind of the guinea pig, kind of doing this stuff and telling you what works and what doesn't. So I'm happy to do that. But I'm pretty sure I'm not going to screw anything up because I, I know just enough to, to where I'm not going to do that. So these pieces are uh, pretty looking pretty good so far. This is the input jack plate. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, so you can see, I believe, some like rusty spots on there. That is actually this stuff that I talked about before, or maybe I talked about it before. It's um, apple cider vinegar and and white vinegar just kind of a mixture because I ran out of some and it's dissolved steel wool in there so check out my video on how I age the wood of the body of my strat I made it look weathered and that's what I use that for so if you're curious go check that out but I have this left over from that whole endeavor and so I use normal white vinegar which I have here and then I also use this, but this really, I let it sit on here and it dried. If you smell this stuff, it actually smells like rust. So it's kind of cool, but if I rub hard enough, I can, I can get it off. But what I'm thinking is if that over time, it'll kind of wear that way and stick on there. If I just gently rub it, it doesn't come off. But if I really bear down, then it does. So, you know, if it comes off, it comes off. I can always try something later. I think the key with this is to go slow and to test things out. Don't go overboard because then you're going to have to start buying replacing your pieces. And some of this stuff isn't cheap, especially things like this. The uh, Go look at my video on the 62 reissue trim, but you know this normally is like $130 for this assembly. So don't screw up. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, so I may end up going ahead and buying some kind of more acidic stuff. The vinegar... It's just really not acidic, or it's not that acidic. Um, what I did to kind of make it more, and again, I'm not a chemist, but I put some of that stuff I had that had already dissolved the steel wool inside of it, but I put some salt in this and then put the vinegar in there. So we all know salt corrodes. Yeah, so again, I think it's just gonna be too weak to really do much unless you really like soak it over time and really let it sit, uh, which, you know, I don't want to just forget about it and then it like eat through the metal. So I didn't really have the patience for that, at least at the moment. So yeah, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is take some finer paper and try to scratch this up and see what happens. And then, you know, you can always go, go in with some more heavy sandpaper and get some deeper grooves in there. But that's the idea and I'll show you that in a minute. These saddles, I believe, are nickel and I really don't want to mess around with the screws. I really don't want to make those rusty to where I can't use these. That seems silly to me. So I think what I'll do is just maybe take all the screws out and maybe set the saddles in some of that solution or maybe just scuff them up. I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do, but nickel definitely wears and relics better than chrome does. So hopefully these will these will go over a little better. So let's go ahead real quick and uh, take some fine paper. This is a thousand grit and I'm just gonna kind of rough up this uh, bridge plate, see what happens. Oh, one thing, one tip I realized is just looking online at people like even trying to make chrome sink fix faucets and fixtures look brushed, like brushed nickel, is you want to go in the same direction with your strokes, which I started off obviously with circular strokes, you know. So if you have a perfectly flat surface and everything, that can kind of work, I guess. But I kind of tried it with this thing, the neck plate, and it didn't really make it seem any more realistic to me. Because the thing is, is like, for whatever reason, these things have high spots and low spots. So until you get the high spots down, you still have pretty huge streaks. I don't know if you can see that, there you go. Um, you can you still kind of have and this is pretty fine. I mean, this is a thousand grit paper Maybe wetting it would help but you know, you still got um, where the the low points are you still got some Big valleys, you know, so I'll continue on with this and show you kind of what happens with it All right, so I did that with sort of mixed results. I guess it's um, a little scuffed up and but it's still shiny Just kind of looks scratched still so what I'm gonna do is maybe try to 
use kind of wet sand, if you will, not with water, but I'm actually going to use this kind of vinegar solution and see what happens. Just to kind of rub it in there. So that's my next plan. All right, I tried the wet sanding thing and didn't do a whole lot. Then I tried some steel wool, which I have laying around. It didn't seem to do a whole lot either. So now I'm thinking maybe I should go to 800 grit and see what kind of scuffing I can get with that. One thing I do want to point out, I really don't want to mess around with the back of the plate that sits against the body of the guitar. I'd just rather not have that have any kind of scratches in it. And that's why I don't really want to dip it in anything or like set it in a kind of solution. I could do the thing where I put the paper towel over it and then soak it that in vinegar. So we'll see. I'm just going to keep messing and see what happens. 